Well, Mayor Michael Hancock joins us now here on Denver 7 News on Local 3 for our bi-weekly interview. Good morning, Mayor. Thanks for being here. As always, good morning. I have one for both of you as well. Oh, nice. <laughs> that looks good. Hey, thanks for being here, Mayor. Um, some, some interesting, exciting news expected this morning. DIA CEO is expected to speak on uh, phase three now of the Great Hall project. Hefty price tag, $1.1 billion, and it would push construction out about four years. Can you give us an idea about phase three and how you feel like the Great Hall project has gone so far? Absolutely. Obviously, we've had our bumps and bruises with this uh, uh, project, but it's a very important project, Brian. We are working to address uh, safety and security measures at uh, DEN, uh, uh, as well as to make sure that we can keep people flowing. And as we, in the next 10 years, are projected to be at 100 million passengers, we need to make sure that this is as efficient uh, airport as possible. And so that's what we're doing after 26 years. The $1 billion price tag seems awfully high. I mean, I recognize that, but relative to other airports around the country who are needing to upgrade and to refresh, Denver, quite frankly, is one of the smallest, if not the smallest price tags uh, to upgrade its airport and to do some critical uh, infrastructure improvements that we have to make at the airport. Last year, about the same time, I requested from the from then the CEO, uh, Kim Day, to give me an estimate of what it would take to complete the project of phase three. What I was wanting to do was to take advantage of the fact that we already had construction crews mobilized, recognizing, obviously, and commonsensically, that if you had to demobilize and remobilize, it would cost more money and more time. And so what Phil, the new CEO, is doing is carrying forth that vision and bringing forth the plan uh, to allow us to take care of the project as we know it while we have mobilized construction crews. One of the busiest airports in the world. Yeah, yeah it'll be yep. nice when all that construction is wrapped up out there. The Denver Coliseum reopening was last night. How are preparations for January stock show coming along? And what does the event say about our city's impact on agriculture? Well, you know what, it is the Super Bowl of stock shows. The reality, there is, it, this type of event does take place anywhere in the country but here in Denver, Colorado. 750,000 people expect to come through our city. Uh, we'll have our billion dollar economic impact. And that's just a phenomenal uh, event in life for our city. It's gone on since many of us were children and before we were born. It's over 100 years old, obviously. And so it's a big deal. I'm excited that the National Western Stock Show is back as we had to take a hiatus last year due to COVID. Um, and I know we're all anxiously anticipating it to take place. Uh, and guess what? We get, a, get to show them um, the new campus that we are developing. Tremendous progress, construction progress, has been made in the two years since the last stock show. And so they get a chance to see a lot of new buildings, a lot of new features. We were there yesterday, given the key to the National Western uh, Authority, so they can be Again, the program and the building. So I think we're gonna we're gonna put a great show on for for our visitors to the stock show this year, and then again uh, begin to show them not only are we the Super Bowl, but we've got new facilities to back it up now. Yeah, so many great uh, rodeo sports coming back this year. Uh, Mayor, on Monday you vetoed a bill that would cut down on flavored tobacco sales in Denver. Uh, council was one vote short of overturning that veto, but explain your decision and any other ideas to curb teen smoking. Yeah, easy. You know, we I share the same objective uh, and value that uh, many members of the council who supported this ban uh, did. But I certainly felt the bill fell short. First and foremost, we were only focused on Denver. And as you know, we live in a very dense uh, metro region. It would have been nothing for kids to go across the street and buy the product. And so if we're going to institute any kind of legislation. Let's make sure that it does the job that we ask it to do to make sure it's effective. I didn't think this bill would be effective at all. Um, and it would only be symbolic. And I'm not into symbolic legislation, particularly on an issue that is so critically important. And we'd already taken steps, raising the age of purchase of tobacco products to 21, creating the retail tobacco licensing. Uh, and we can strengthen even more of our efforts around this. And so like some of the members who did not vote for uh, the legislation, we believe that we should take a scalpel and more surgical and strategic approach to this as opposed to bringing a sledgehammer. And I think that makes more public policy sense than to pass something that would not have been effective at all. Mayor Hancock, always nice to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hey, listen, to both of you, your families and all your, your viewers, Happy holidays to you. Be safe. Have a great time. We'll see you on the other side of 2021. You too, you. sir.